You think it'd be a bad idea if we did a mountain lion call? That doesn't scream like a, I mean, does it sound wicked? Sounds really wicked. Does it really? Yeah. Yeah, let's just blast it. We got our firearms. We got, we can go inside if someone. <laughs> I'm the one sleeping outside. All the coyotes are gonna leave. Oh yeah, <laughs> they'll be coming in. They'll be turning. They'll take off. Yeah, it's a trick. <laughs> We've been fooled. <laughs> Actually, before we do the lion call, let's do a rabbit in distress call. Your neighbors are gonna be like, what the heck are they doing over there? They're doing animal sacrifices. <laughs> so whenever an, an entire clan of Sasquatch showed up on my property one night, mm -hmm. there was a rabbit doing that at the edge of the woods. Really? Or it could have been a fox, like a fox breeding call, right. but it sounded like that. And they all came up to check it out. It right. sounded like a whole herd of deer were walking up, so I hit my spotlight and I was like, what the heck is that? What are all those eyes? One of the eyes went up to about 10 or 12 feet. It rose like an elevator, just like. Yeah, I'd have been running. Uh, and then right after that is where I watched a gr big gray Sasquatch walk across, walk across. like a, yeah, like a big open clearing. So this might call in some type of big predator. If there's a big predator around here, it's gonna come in and check it's this out. It's gonna come in, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that even gives you the vibe that something's off, you know yeah. what I mean? That's wild. Do you hear anything on that parabolic? Any? Other than what's yeah. screaming? Yeah, I just turned away from it to see if I can pick up any other noise. Okay, I'll try to turn this thing down. We're gonna do a mountain lion call. Oh, those cattle are gonna freak out. Oh, yeah. That guy's gonna have a stampede. Those dogs don't like that. I bet nothing likes that. I don't like that. I bet this is freaking my neighbors out. Oh, I bet it is too. We'll do a line whistle. It says lion whistle. Really? Yeah. Watch it be a mating call. Damn it. Oh, I think it is. The first one was a lion in heat. Oh, great. This one's a dying jackrabbit. The dogs don't like that. 
Not at all. No. A little bit. Dude, I can hear so much better with this thing up in the air. Really? All right, I'll turn it down. Yeah, your neighbors are going to be like, what the heck was going on over there? Like nothing. What are you, you talking the, about? Do you have the thermal? Oh, I forgot the thermal. That's what we should have grabbed. Yeah. I knew I forgot something. We'll see if something follows us back to camp. Yeah. Should we turn this parabolic off or just leave it on? We can turn it off. It kind of gets to you after a while, all that white noise. Oh, it's really sensitive. It is. I mean, anytime you move on the ground, I can hear it in here. Oh, yeah. Even just like rubbing the fabric of my anything. pants. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can turn it off. It's like super sensitive. I kind of prefer using my natural hearing. Like, it's cool to have, like, if something's going off right. far away, but I, I like using my natural everything. Yeah. Natural senses are way better. Oh, it's real quiet now. You could hear a pen drop out here. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of wondering. I was wanting to see if, uh, as we get closer down there, if there's something near the microphone. I wish, like how we had the uh, the uh, thermal. We'll go down there and get the thermal and see what. Yeah, What's around? We'll have to really listen with our ears to make sure there's nothing moving in on us. Don't mind me, dude, but... Oh, 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 that's a bird. Is that a bird? Yeah. What the hell? That's the big dipper right there. That that's one's the, the little that's dipper. That's the little dipper. Yeah. Hey, they say cryptids move around when it's like that. Thermal's gonna look awesome tonight because of the moonlight. This camera is really heavy with the kind of IR light. Makes that, what is that? I don't know. Frog? Or like grasshopper? Crickets? Fuck, that is a frog. I guess it is. It did get quiet, didn't it? Got it? Quiet. it was real quiet. And then they just all started back up again. Uh huh. That's a good observation. Thing just shut down. Shut down. Yeah, we got to be careful because we might yeah. call in something. I know. That's why I got my hand on my pistol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I left everything down there. I did not. <laughs> you said blast calls, and I'm like, I'm gonna put something in my pocket. Yeah. You're like, I'm gonna blast something else. <laughs> Did you hear that? I did. Was I it a dog? Think, I don't think that was a dog. I'm looking for eyes shining around us, but. No, that was off in the distance. That was yeah. 
like over by my neighbor's shed. Okay. Your neighbor has that goat farm. I know. There's a lot of them over there, dude. Yeah. There's like 30 or 40 goats. That was one of the biggest goats I've ever seen. Oh, he's mean he's as He's like hell. the size of a donkey. Dude, he challenges those dogs. Really? You should see him. He fights the dogs. Oh, shit. He's mean as hell. I don't think we'd be able to walk through the woods. Like, how steep it is, rocky, and like, all the sticks. You'd be tripping up for oh, sure. Man. Good thing you got that field. I'm so glad that moon lights out. It's not even funny. Yeah. I can't believe those lights lighted up that well. Oh, yeah. These little lights down here around the cabin, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I'm glad you put those up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If we start losing all of our battery power. I think I got three batteries. Oh, okay. So, so two extra ones. Yeah. Okay. See, it just seems like... Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, the only problem is I mean, the cedar be, trees are so thick, you right. can't see. And, and, and legitimately, they could be armadillo or anything, you know, I don't know what it is. Well, I'm sure there are little critters out there. Yeah. Wow. Dude, I so, I can't wait for the morning. I just cannot wait to get down there and look at that freaking audio recorder. Oh, yeah. See, I feel like there's something right there, center screen. I just can't tell what it is. Get down, look up. It's like I'm seeing like a head or something. Really? There, I'll show you. Do you see anything? Mm-mm. sounded real faint though it was like it was real light yeah when I look through it it's too hard to see through the woods because of how thick it is with all the cedar trees yeah it's thick but it still looks really good well I was just hoping to see something that was like you know something on the edge of a tree or something mm-hmm Boy, it is thick, isn't it? Yeah. And think, there's no there's no foliage on anything yet, hardly. No. In the summertime, you won't be able to see much. I've noticed the most cryptid activity in the summertime, but it also happens in the fall, so that's good. Well, I got that that how mm -hmm. in in March, March fifth, twenty twenty. Yeah. And it was cold like this. Let's see if I can use my, can, you, can you swing this around and use either eye? Or yeah. you just switch eyes. Yeah, you just switch eyes. Oh, damn, dude. I'm blind as hell then in my right eye. <laughs> I can see really good with my left eye. God, it's almost too bright. Holy crap. Oh, wow. You can see that heat signature off that fire on the tree. Mm -hmm. It's gotten the tree warm. Oh, yeah. Like if I put my hand around a tree, you'll be able to see like my fingers that were around really? the tree. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I watched a rabbit the other day and bounced through the woods mm -hmm. and everywhere he bounced, he left like a heat signature. Yeah, the arm of your chair's got a heat signature on it. Probably from you sitting in it earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, objects retain heat for quite a while. Isn't that wild? 
Mm -hmm. So if there's a squatch walk through the woods, you should be able to see like his his prints, or if he puts his hand up on a tree, you should be able to see that. See it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that one. You, I can't remember who you were out with. There was something on that tree, and then as yeah. you guys watched it through the night, it just eventually went. It faded. Yeah. Like something had put its hand on the tree, and then it just went away. Mm -hmm. But it took it a while to go away. I know your cabin's older, but I keep hearing noises in there. You think it's the wood popping? It's, it's always done that, dude. Yeah, it's it does creepy. it all night long. It sounds yeah. like someone's walking like around. Someone's walking around. I know. It's freaky. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're sleeping in there, you hear that? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's mice and stuff like inside the. Well, either that or something's underneath the cabin bumping around. Yeah. Because I don't know if you've looked some of the uh, lattice work. If you go over on that other corner straight in front of you, there's a big old hole in the lattice where something, uh, you know, broke through the lattice. Yeah. I'm guessing it was a raccoon. That's just a lot of popping. It is. <laughs> it's kind of unusual. And it does it all the time, dude. If you see me looking in the camera, I'm not trying to show off. A lot of people say, all right, pop star. But I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame and in I'm frame. making sure the settings are right and I'm making right. sure I'm in focus. So, Well, that's why I sat down because I felt like my hand's jumping around too much and I want to mm -hmm. slowly look through this thing and span. Yeah, I hold up this camera for too long. Next thing oh, I know, yeah. I'm not even in frame anymore. It's I like, know, you're shaking and everything else. It's like, man, my arm's <laughs> getting tired. The camera's not that heavy, but just holding your arm up like this for so long gets tiring i'm sure in the military they had you hold up your arms for like oh, a yeah. long time and you your arms become like bricks jelly, yeah. yeah like jelly yeah they used to make us hold our rifle out in front of us mm -hmm. that sucked oh, i bet Dude, there's something going on to our left over here i keep hearing it out of my left ear but i don't see nothing really Mm-hmm. that man looks wicked it's bright yeah, it is. Yeah, I keep hearing something quartering to our left. Mm-hmm. And it's not like it's real, uh, it's real faint. Which if it was a small animal, yeah, see how that popping noise? That's loud. It's always doing it. I think some of it's the metal roof too. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think so. Because the thermal contraction and everything. Mm -hmm. Does this thing stop and take pictures sometimes? Is that what it's doing? You can make it take video or photos. Well, I'm wondering because it's just doing it by itself. It freezes. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, it's recalibrating. Oh, is that what it's doing? Yeah, it'll recalibrate the image. Um, what's cool about us going up the road on top of that hill, mm -hmm. whenever we called, is if something did come in, we might pick it up on that audio recorder. Hear that? Yep. What is that? I don't know.
sounded like a coyote or something, didn't it? There ain't no coyote I ever heard. Some type of distress call. Yeah, that's... Now it's quiet. That's a new one for me. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I don't know what that was. No. I almost had that sound like when someone's drilling into wood, when it starts like squeaking real Squeaking? Yeah. yeah, but it was an animal for sure. Right. What do you think, about a minute it did it, maybe? Yeah, like a good minute. What the hell did we call in? Yeah, really. What was wild about it is that it was real low. Mm hmm. You think your neighbors are screwing with us? I, mean, I guess there's any potential, but. Like they're trying to call in maybe the mountain lion that we sounded yeah. off. Why would it have been so low? I don't know. It's already after 10, isn't it? I don't know. I haven't looked at the time lately. It is Friday, so maybe people are up. I might be sleeping in the cabin at night. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I know I am. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if that thing snap crackles and pops all night. I don't know if I want to be out here. No, let me rephrase that. That's why I won't be out here. Yeah. That freaks me out. I don't know what that is. I mean, it'd be one thing if we could determine what it was. I don't know what that was. I'm not sure if these little microphones that are clipped onto us picked that up, but maybe the audio recorder out there did. I bet it did. Uh, did you look at the time? It's 10.09, so you'll know when to look on that recording. Okay, 10.09, so three hours in? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's got a time and date. And yeah, that thing, it's always done that, dude. It's always popping. Weird. I'm still getting something down here to my left. And did you notice whenever that vocalization was going off, all those dogs shut up? There ain't been a dog making noise since then. Mm -mm. They're starting to pick up now a little bit, but whenever that thing was going off, they all shut up. And they didn't shut up even with my mountain lion call. They did a little bit, but maybe something's coming in, man. I'm thinking so. All right, so I just heard a loud tree break in the woods. By the by, the audio, by recorder. the audio recorder. Yes, you didn't hear that. I caught the tail end of something. <laughs> yeah, but I thought it was you no. on the rocks over here where you where you misstepped. No, and it was the I thought it was the rock. No, there's was, something like, down yeah. there. Yeah, there's something down there. That was cool. That was right where you were telling me about the mine speak and how mm -hmm. all those trees are broken. Mm -hmm. Zero wind out here tonight. Just none. Completely yeah, still. It sounded like something broke a tree, like, if we or like out, a big limb. If we get out there tomorrow morning and that damn thing is broke, oh, or the recorder, recorder is. That's what it sounded like. Like something broke, broke that off that that tree that fell. I mean, it sounded like it was wow. at least an eight-inch tree. Like that was loud. I thought it was the rock under your feet next to the fire pit here. No. Oh wow. Man, that was loud and distinct to me see you were on the right side of it you could hear you were on that side of the fire that's why yeah i can hear this fire that it, gave me chills there's something down there oh yeah oh we there's something here because we earlier that owl that was intense that owl was very very loud yeah so let's talk about that we were sitting here and what happened yeah, we were, I don't even remember what we were discussing. Do you remember what we were talking about? 
You were telling me about the carnivore diet. And then all of a sudden it was just like, ooh. Just right up there. Yeah. Right where we did the calls and we were running the parabolic at. Right. It was off in this direction to the southwest, right up here. Yeah. So there really is something here. Well, yeah, and it was it was loud. I mean, he was, I, he, he, she, they're within 100 yards. I guarantee it. Yeah, and right before the owl went off, which we call Big Owl. Big Owl now. Yeah. Um, we heard that distress call. Yeah, that went on for a minute. I've never heard anything I don't know like what that. that was. I've never heard anything like that. Yeah. And it was low. It was like something was, uh, like something was being muffled. Yeah. There's something here with us tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm actually impressed. Yep. And I was just telling you, man, it's got to be freaky being out here by yourself. It is. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I've stayed out here probably a total of five or six times, and every time I've had some kind of interaction. And like I told you that one story, you know, and I'm not too afraid to admit it. I, I mean, they ran me out of here. Yeah. They scared me so bad, I left here, and I slept on top of the hill till four o'clock in the morning and then I finally just said heck with it I'm coming down in my cabin and I'm gonna sleep no matter what and I was so exhausted I just went in there and you know literally fell out out of sheer you know exhaustion <clears throat> but I'd been sleeping in the truck several several hours before that what exactly did they do that night that's when you heard the Whoa. yeah that's when the it was about I don't know, it was probably 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. I had just got done eating, like I told you, and I was eating some uh, corn chips, some Fritos. Oh. And I was sitting there drinking a beer and uh, eating some Fritos, and uh, I hadn't even got done cooking. I bet it hadn't been 15 minutes. And I sat up there on the deck. I was sitting in that wicker chair right there where we did the, the record uh, of the last video. I was sitting right there. And all of a sudden, I heard the coyotes going off down here, like mm -hmm. we heard earlier, mm -hmm. and and you could hear them. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, I noticed something was making a, a coyote howl, but I could tell it wasn't the coyotes. Mm -hmm. And the coyotes were starting to, at that point, starting to kind of peter off. They they weren't screaming as much because they were yipping a little they bit were, tapering, oh, yeah they, and they had been going pretty good for you know the better part of 30 seconds and once this thing came in they got quieter they were still yipping mm. but this thing was like in control and it got real deep and then it did a howl and they were yipping and then they stopped yipping his howl continued and as his howl stopped like was tailing off to the end of it, it did that wow. Yeah. And I freaked. I mean, I sat here and I told, like I told you, I sat here and told myself, I tried to, you know, that whole fight or flight thing. And I was like, I need to sit here and have this experience. I, I said I was gonna do this, this, that, and the other, and it wasn't two minutes. <laughs> I was running in there and I was yanking everything out of the cabin and throwing it in the truck. And I was gone. Within five minutes, I had everything in the truck, and I was out of here. And I went back into town, got a cup of coffee, called the wife. She laughed at me. She's like, Where, what are you doing? And I said, well, I got scared off my own property. <laughs> yeah. She goes, really? Yeah, yeah, I did. <clears throat> but that was, uh, I don't even remember. That was uh, before... The last time we had, uh, when we did the recording, right? Mm -hmm. That had happened like several months before, yeah. if I recall right. Do you think there's some type of correlation between the Sasquatch and the coyotes? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, there's there's something going on. I mean, the, I mean they were moving with them. They I were mean, moving with them, yeah. yeah. Yep. Or within cro real close proximity to one another. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And how loud was that? It was... Um, you could feel it in your chest. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what got me was, is how powerful it was. And I knew right then I was like, this is not anything normal, you know? Yeah. I was watching I, a video of an actual encounter and I sighted an encounter and that's what the guy said the Sasquatch did was that. Whoa. 
sound. It's so powerful. Yeah. It, it really is frightening because it, it reverberates through you. Yeah. You know, kind of like that owl call just a while ago. That was so loud, mm. you know. I mean, I've never heard an owl that loud. You know, I hear them in the woods from here now and then, you know, and you're like, yeah, there's an owl over there, you know, no big deal. Mm. That was loud. I mean, that didn't even really sound like an owl. Yeah, that was really loud. So. And what are the chances that both of the properties you bought in Missouri have had Sasquatch activity? Do you think there's some type of like connection there? Like you've been marked or tagged and maybe they followed you? That possibility is always there. I've thought about it many times. Um, but you got to remember, you know, you and I've discussed this before. I don't know how large their territory is. Mm. These two pieces of property are probably, what would you say, maybe? I think they're maybe like 75, 80 miles apart. Yeah, I was about to say like an hour and a half. From yeah, hour. and I, I think that, you know, I don't know, but there's a good possibility that, you know, they may have uh, family units that reach out this far. They may have, you know what I'm saying? Mm. They may have a... a an area that is this encompasses. I guess you so. Know? And, and because the thing that gets me though is is I've never had any kind of reaction like I had out here mm. at the other property. You know what I mean? Any <clears throat> any vocalization other than that howl. You know, I've had a lot of uh, tree pushovers here and a lot of vocalization. Yeah. You know, and that's what really freaks me out when I'm out here. Now the other place, you know, I had the howl and then I had uh, that one night I had owls come in mm -hmm. and they kept coming and I was like, okay, why are they, they you know, I could tell they were getting closer and closer. I'm like, why are they coming at me? And finally I got to the point where I, I freaked myself out and I got up and left there too because I felt like whatever it was, it wasn't an owl and they were coming closer and closer. Yeah. And it, it just, it, I mean, it, it got really close and I knew they were on the property and that's what got me. I was like, okay, I'm going, I gotta go. The whole fight or flight thing kicked in and I ran. Like a little girl, but hey, I don't care, you know. Yeah. I actually enjoy being out here with somebody because it, it's not like, you know, you're, you're bulletproof with two people as opposed to one, but you have, you know, when more than one person hears it, then, you, then it's validation. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, did you hear that? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Absolutely. And, and I know you didn't hear that tree break as good as I did. No, I thought that, it was the that rocks. But that audio recorder is right there. Yeah. It's right there. If we get over there tomorrow, I swear, and that branch is broke off that we put that on, oh my word. Mm -hmm. Woo. And I know it sounds crazy being marked or tagged and it being that far of a distance, but think about like how far a great white shark can smell like one drop, one of, drop blood, of blood or like a white tailed ocean. deer, like when a doe's in heat, heat. how far they can seek smell. out. Yep. Yeah. Or like yep. a bear, like a black bear being able to smell like food inside mm -hmm. a metal can that hasn't been opened from miles away. Miles away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. They have, uh, they have abilities and they need those abilities to survive. Yeah. You know? And That's why they're elite. They're the masters of the woods for a reason. Right. Yep. And they can move freely wherever they want, when they want, you know, yeah. discreetly, uh, quickly. The, the great white of the woods. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Yeah, they own this domain. This is theirs. Well, hopefully they're friendly Sasquatch around here. I think most of them are, I'll be honest with you, because there'd be a whole lot more uh, press and things, you know, if there were p people, you know, missing at that level. Although, who, who is it, Ron Pilates? Is he the one that's always talking about 411, the missing David people? Pilates. David Pilates, there yeah. you go. I couldn't remember his name, but yeah, that's freaky. I guarantee you probably later on tonight, you know, like you said, we're, we're probably gonna be sitting here at two or three in the morning and we're gonna get woke up. Yeah, yeah, that's I what I was telling. I don't think we're gonna get a full night's sleep. I was telling Sean that earlier. I guarantee you once we go to sleep, that's when the action's gonna, gonna take Early. off. Yeah, it's gonna ramp up. Yeah. Well, it's already happening. We haven't even went to bed yet. Yeah. You know? Well, before that stick broke, I saw like this round heat signature over there and I was like, oh, it's just gotta be heat off a tree. And then I heard that. So I've been kind of thinking about 
pulling that, pulling that thermal back out. Yeah, it was right over there. Well, I keep getting movement over here to our right, my right as I'm standing right now. Yeah. Earlier, because I was sitting down, it was to my left, but you can hear this, something over here. Yeah, you keep hearing something to the yeah. left, but you're mm -hmm. sitting to the left of the fire. Right. I'm over here to the right, so that fire's in between us. That's why you're not here. And that's why I heard that stick break right. over here, because it happened it. on this side. Because yeah. I, I was listening to the fire, and I thought you'd kick the rock down around the fire pit. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh my God, you hear that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, that was solid. Yeah. What, um, let's, we need to check our phone. What time is it? So probably oh. about, it was like at 10.50, so probably four hours into the recording, yeah. we should hear that stick, stick break. break. And then three hours in, what what else happened? We heard that distress Big call. Owl. And then we heard the okay. distress call about a half hour before that. Yeah, we just gotta hope that recorder is operating and functioning the way yeah, it should. That, yeah, the batteries are still going. Yeah, because I have a history of um, just having bad luck with recorders when things go off. I'm like, yeah, I got a recorder out there. Next thing I know, it's like, nah, yeah. I didn't record. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know it's getting cold. I don't know what the temperature is right now, but it is chilly out here. Yeah, we've been spinning around this fire. Yeah, like rotisserie chickens. Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. We're just like spinning. Trying to stay warm. Because my front side was warm, but my back. And yeah, my whole is... shoulders and everything were freezing. Yeah. I need to get the heat up this shirt so that it can warm my body. I can it. see your breath now. Oh, yeah. It's cold. I was actually like pretty tired, but once that stick, I keep calling it a stick, once that tree, tree snapped, snapped in the woods, um, mm -hmm. now I'm like wide awake. Yeah, and I got to get the... Uh, I got to still get all my bedding ready. You're ready for bed, and I'm not even nowhere near it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a cold one. But it's only dropping down to like 41 degrees a night, which probably means it's actually going to be like... 35. 35. Yeah. yeah, with the moisture by the creek, yeah. Like I could hear rustling of the leaves. I thought the wind was blowing. I can hear something moving down there. Something moving right over here. My batteries are low. I'm at 19% on the camera and about 2 or 3% on the wireless microphones. Did that just happen? I don't know. They just started dying pretty quick, I'll which is unusual. 80%. Strange, that heat signature that I saw in the woods, uh -huh. it's not there anymore. Man, there's something back there. It's just so thick I can't see what it actually is. There's something moving over there. Yeah, I hear it too. Uh -huh. Well, you know that makes sense because we heard Big Owl over here. Mm -hmm. Then over here, now we're catching. And you, excuse me, you got the heat signature. And now we can hear something moving. Mm -hmm. I heard that big tree break exactly where the audio recorder is down there. I think we're being triangulated. I think there's more than, I think there's probably three. Yeah. I keep catching something over here, like almost straight in front of me right here. It's dead quiet out there, zero wind. Oh yeah. That's why I was surprised and I said, is that wind picking up or, and I walked over here because I could hear rustling even over the, the fire. Mm -hmm. I caught the movement and I came over here and I can still hear it and now it's quiet. Like eight feet up, kind of step over to your right a little bit. Maybe you'll be able to I see. I just caught movement, hold on. Something just flashed in the corner of the screen. There's something over there. There is, I just caught movement. I saw it er earlier and just brushed it off. I was like, no, nah, that's probably heat. Dude, that was so fast. Yeah, and then I heard so that, fast. that big st tree break down there. 
And that was like a perfect snap, like snap. Where the hell did that go? That was quick. Something moved out of the very left corner and it darted behind a tree. And I don't see nothing, but I caught movement all the way down here in this bottom left corner as I was spanning to the left, something like, I mean, just immediately moved off screen. Yeah, I told you I saw something back there. I just wasn't sure what I was even looking at. I didn't want to make a big deal about it, but once I heard that tree break, I'm like, okay, what was that over there? <laughs> yeah, we're definitely... I just don't like to sound dramatic if there's nothing around, but there's something around. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something around. There's too much going on for there not to be. I mean, that huge owl call just, that floored me. Mm -hmm. And it was so loud. I've never heard an owl even remotely get close to that kind of volume. I always forget to look up in the trees. Why does it turn red like that when you go up in the trees? Isn't I don't weird? know. I don't like that about pulsar. It, oh, is it with this particular type of? No, it does it with the other ones too. I've asked my friends who have different brands and they said, yep, I don't know why it does that. That freaking house. I know that cabin never quits popping. It could be haunted, man. Yep. I don't, I think it's the metal roof. I really do. Yeah, it's like the wood mm -hmm. popping as the temperature changes. But it's pretty damn loud. <laughs> it is. These trees are so thick, dude. We're in the woods though. We may be in the yard, but this whole property is just surrounded by woods. Oh, yeah. And it's out in the middle of nowhere. If we go out in the woods, we're just gonna be stepping on big sticks, big making sticks. all kinds of noise. It's gonna scare whatever is out there off. We want them to come into us. And it seems to be working. <laughs> it does. <laughs> There's so much stuff out here. I keep catching like this one area and I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that really echoes here. Damn, that echoes. That, is, that sounds good, dude. Mm -hmm. Dog oh, bark. Dog. I was like, what, what is that? Yeah. Uh, here, I've got a question for you. Mm. That sounds like a whooping, you know, like, a, like an owl. Mm -hmm. If that owl was truly an owl, why didn't he sound back off to you? He might hear in a second. We'll see. He sounded much bigger than me. Yeah. It's that eight, 800 pound owl. Right, that's why his name is Big Owl. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I guarantee stuff's gonna happen whenever I okay. get in that hammock. You bet. You close that door, go to bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already know it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. We haven't even, I mean, we have done absolutely nothing other than take a walk through the woods Cook some dinner and we both ate. And we blasted the, the, the sound and ran the parabolic. Mm. And now everything is just like, for the longest time, what we came back down here for half an hour, it was like dead quiet. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everything just started going off. It should be, um, the dog should be barking. There's too many farm dogs for yeah. there not to be at least one dog barking. And normally when I stay the night here, it's almost like they're non-stop. Really? And they're not barking at all. Yeah. Night. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, they're almost annoying. Do you yeah. hear that? Over there? Uh-huh. It's like a 
Some type of tree knot. Tree knot. Yeah. I keep catching that light over here again. I don't know if it's that, oh, it is that house or whatever it is. Yeah. It sounds like there's a woodpecker, but woodpeckers don't go off at nighttime. Our fire's cranking. It is now. Cool. I'm going to go stand by it. As soon as I hit record, they stop. I don't know why. March 15th, 2024. We got owls. They're going crazy. Those are the strangest sounding owls I've ever heard. For some reason, my phone kicked off and shut the video off. It's March 15th, about 11.30 at night. The owls are going off. The gal's recording over here to my right. second ago. But they were really going off and I thought the recording was going and it, it wasn't. I gotta swore I turned that on. I know I did. All right, it's the next morning. I feel like we had some action last night. We heard some unique sounds out in the woods. What I thought was the most interesting was that tree break down here where we set the audio recorder and that strange owl that came up. Last night, my snug pack sleeping bag split open. The whole zipper just split open and man, it was a rough night. I didn't get probably um, 30 minutes sleep an to an yeah. hour. I slept a little bit this morning once we woke up and um, Sean was awake at 5.30. I guess you heard me out there cussing, didn't you? Yeah, it was... Uh early in the morning and I, I started picking up on, on some kind of movement. 
and you had your headlamp on and it was red and I could see it off the, the cabin roof. So I knew something was going on. I didn't know what it was. I was like, somebody's either messing with the fire, but it, was, it turned out it was you. You yeah. were already getting up to, to warm up, try to get the fire going and stoke the fire. It was yeah. about five o'clock or 5.15 in the morning then. But yeah. yeah, we had a lot of interesting activity last night. Um, we heard, uh, like you said, that large owl that, that now we are calling uh, uh, the big owl. Big owl, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it made this noise. What time do you think that was? Was that about 9 30, 10 o'clock? It was right that, in that period of time. Yeah. And uh, it was extremely loud right up over here to our south and our west. And it, it sounded like it was about 100 yards from us, wouldn't you say, give yeah. or take? And it made one noise like an owl. And then I was like, hey, Miguel, you know, because he, he does such a great owl call. I'm like, make that call, see if it'll respond to you. Mm -hmm. And we got nothing. Yeah. I mean, nothing for an hour. And it's like, okay, if that was a true owl and a, you know, a live owl, it would have responded back to you. Yeah. And there was nothing, you know? And then what was it about 11, 11.30? Then we actually heard owls yeah. move in and they were yeah. down here in the holler. Back down in here, they're hooting. You yeah. should be able to hear that on the audio. On I was the watching audio, the meter yeah. spike whenever they were going. But yeah, that snug pack, sleeping bag, expedition, sleeper, whatever it's called, sucked. So if you guys are looking at snug pack, I wouldn't recommend it. Even the hammock sucked. It's always real tight. Like no matter how you got it set up, yeah, I don't it's like horrible. That. Yeah. that Cabela's chair, man, that thing's comfortable. I'd highly recommend the Cabela's 360 <laughs> degree chair or zero chair, whatever it's called. And I, and I second that because I've got one too and they're fabulous. Yeah. Even has a little fancy table with the cup holder, phone yeah. holder. Phone holder, that yeah, that's awesome. cool. But yeah, we're gonna go check this audio recorder. We're gonna see if the branch that it's hanging on is broken. I doubt it, but man, it sounded like that tree break was right there. Yeah, I hope it caught all of that on audio. I really do. Mm -hmm. I hope when you get home and you review that, that it's, it's like crystal clear. Yeah, and also we'll talk about some of the things we noticed in the morning after we woke up. Yeah, we'll do that when we get back up to the cabin. Notice that, that's why I stopped you. I was like, wait a minute. It's kind of fresh. Yeah, that's right around where I heard it, either Oops. around oh, there yeah. or by the audio recorder. Yep. That could be it. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. There's pieces of it right here. There's one here, a piece here, this here. It's all broke. Yeah. You can see how it was pushed off right there. Yeah. I don't know if this was it or not. I have no idea. I just find it interesting that we were walking through here talking about it and then I see that tree broke. It could be. This one looks like it's older, but it was about that size. Yeah. From what it sounded like anyways. Yeah, that that's an old break there. That's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Older. You can tell by the end here. Yeah, you can that, tell. Yeah, it's been here. That didn't happen last night. That looks like it might have happened last night. That does. Yeah, I agree. Probably got good audio all night. Yeah, I was worried it was going to be on the ground. I, I, I was so worried. Yep, so it looks like it's still there. It wasn't that branch that broke. It's hard to say what broke. There's a lot of damage in here, but it didn't sound natural to me. But I guess it's hard to say, really. Yeah. What'd you find? Well, this here's, and you'll, you'll probably notice it yourself. This is the area that I used to leave. This was my gifting tree. This is where I left a lot of apples, like up here on these cedar trees. I'd break these branches off and I'd leave the apples on them, like up here and up here mm -hmm. and right here. And they'd always obviously be gone the next time I came down. The last time I gifted was about two and a half months ago. It was in the winter time, it was really cold. I came out here with some peanut butter jars and uh, the jar's gone. It was down in here. It was stuck down inside. Oh, I was going to tell you, I found a, a jar over there at the edge of the, your property. Was like it, a bigger one? Was it plastic? Yeah. That's Yeah, that was a peanut butter jar. Yeah. I guarantee I it. I can't believe I forgot to bring that up. Yeah, you should have grabbed that. Okay. But this is the only thing that's left of the... And it looks like maybe a raccoon got into it because the lids broke. That's weird how there's a few jaw bones right yeah, there. Yeah, I just noticed that. I didn't see those till just now. There's another one right there. Is that possum or is that a, a 
That's no. not a raccoon, I don't think. Pick it up. What does that look like? Is that? That's like a possum. That job. is a possum. Yeah. yeah, I think that's possum, without a doubt. There's other bones back underneath here. Mm -hmm. See it right there? Small bone there. Yeah. Something got killed here. Obviously, there's the other jaw bone. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah, something came up and died here. Yep. Or got killed. Or got killed. Yeah. Right. Yeah, then there's that. Fucking rock. Yeah, it is. You know? I think I found another piece of that peanut butter jar over here. Oh, really? Yeah. Bobby oh, damn, there it is. Yep. Yeah, there's some broken pieces. Sure enough. There's the rest of it. You can see some bite marks in it. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe a raccoon got that that jar of peanut butter. Yeah. Without a doubt. Because when I've had the, I found them out here, probably a total of four or five complete jars where there's not a bite mark on any of the jars. The lid has been removed mm -hmm. and the lid has been put back on and the whole thing is crystal clear clean like almost like they were able to get their tongue down in there and wipe it clean it was that clean yeah you know and the lid's back on it mm -hmm. so it's like okay this is interesting that's yeah i'm guessing a raccoon got that one with those teeth marks on it the weird part is the the actual jar is like 150 200 yards over there straight over there yeah you know what happened he probably got the jar stuck on his head. It could have been, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> he didn't get it off till he got over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see that big bull out there in the field? Yeah. I don't know if it's a bull or not. It's a big cow. Whatever it is. What you got over there? That there's a huge cow vertebrae. That is big. Yeah, it's, it's massive. Boy, it's heavy too. Yeah. Man. Well, I guess so. It's got to support a th couple thousand pound animal. Uh huh. Look at this jawbone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Massive sucker. There's more of that iron. Stuff's heavy. Why do you think people don't find any bones, any bodies? What's your answer on that? That is so simple. It, I can't believe that that question even gets raised within the Bigfoot community. And, and you know, I understand it from a skeptic's point, but things break down fairly quick. Um, minus the, 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 you know, the bones up here on the hill. But mm. then again, I don't know how often that happens. You know, I don't know how often and how much time it takes those cow bones to break down. Yeah. You know, they're very dense and large bones. And it would be the same for, you know, Sasquatch. But my thing is, I think there's a strong possibility that they may bury their dead. I really believe that, you know, like when you see things in the, you know, other researchers have found large mounds in the ground, just in the middle of the woods. You know, I think it would be a good idea that if there were researchers out there that were truly interested in finding that kind of information, that they dig those areas up. You know, they try to exhume some type of bone and try to get something. But at the same time, it's always that question of you're disturbing a grave mm -hmm. and who's watching you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, me personally, I wouldn't want to be the one caught trying to dig up a body. <laughs> well, there's you know like I mean? the Serpent Mound in Ohio, the large mounds around that area, and uh -huh. all over North America. Do you think it's possible that there's some type of connection with the Sasquatch and the Giants of the old days? It's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of stuff I think that uh, we're going to find out in the coming years because the topic is becoming so large now that, you know, and there's a lot of people on board, you know, in the world of, of scientific research, you know, the Jeff Meldrums, the uh, Mr. Nelson, all these folks are 
very good at what they do. And to me, they've proven the story already. It's just the mainstream media hasn't truly released it. Mm -hmm. I think they've already, you know, pretty much proven the case. You know, like with Dr. Meldrum and having the dermal ridges and everything that he finds in footprints and everything like that. I mean, he's convinced he's never seen one, and he knows they exist. Because, like he said, if it's got a footprint, it exists. It's a living creature. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, I mean, nothing else. I mean, you know, what do we wear, size 11 or 12, and our feet might be 10 or 11 inches long, you know, and they find footprints all the time with regularity that are 15, 16, 21 inches and 8 inches wide at the heel. And that's a large, large bipedal animal. I mean, that is huge, you know. Um, I don't know if they date back to that time frame, but I wouldn't be surprised, not even remotely, you know. Uh, I think they are, like I have said before, a prehistoric people, and they have been here, you know, even before the American Indian. I think they've been here, you know, possibly upwards of twenty to 50,000 years, maybe even longer, you know. I think they've inhabited this planet almost since the inception, you know. Mm -hmm. I think they have, you know, uh, been around probably during the dinosaur age and everything. They may be the original people that we descended from quite possibly yeah. that's my feeling on it anyway mm -hmm. you know i brought the jug of water mm -hmm. there was like a rock sitting on it wasn't there yeah what did you find this morning yeah that was interesting and that's the other thing that and i asked miguel this morning because he was tired because he didn't get much sleep so he sat down by the fire this morning and covered up with the sleeping bag and i started cooking breakfast and i had uh left the towel that we were cooking with last night so we could handle the uh, cast iron pot and get it on, on and off the fire. And um, I left that and the lighter on top of the water jug that you brought with you, you know, so that we could wash dishes and wash our hands and everything like that. And uh, I get up this morning, like I said, and I'm cooking breakfast and I'm like, oh man, I was like, that handle's gonna get too hot, I gotta find that towel. And I was like, oh, it's on the water jug. And I leaned up because I was just sitting in the chair right next to the stairs. I leaned up and grabbed the towel and pulled the towel from underneath the banister here going down the stairs. And as I pulled it off, I heard something clink, clink, clink. And I was trying to grab it like it was going to fall off the water jug. And I look on top of it and I realize it's a rock. Mm -hmm. And there's a rock sitting on top of the water jug that was on top of the towel that I never seen. I just picked the towel up and it fell off the towel. So that was another strange occurrence. You know, we wake up and, and we've got a rock sitting on top of the towel that we used last night, you know? Yeah, that's unusual. I didn't put it there. No, I mean, neither one of us. I mean, yeah, we've had this discussion all morning. It's like, I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. And I was like, no, I didn't either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, this is the thing that I'm talking about. The occurrences that continuously take place out here that I have picked up on and I never noticed it before. I never even paid any attention to it. But once I realized there was something happening, I started keying in on everything. And that's just another example, you know, of things that take place out here that I have no explanation for. Absolutely none, you know. It's, um, it's really cool, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to know that, one, they were within, what, 10 to 15 feet of your bedding. They didn't yeah. disturb you. When I got you know? up at 3 in the morning last night, I told you I could hear something big walking around out there. I just thought it was a deer. Right. And, like, this morning, that's another interesting thing I should bring up. Miguel was so cold that he's like, Sean, i got to go get in the truck and warm up. I'm freezing. I was like, all right, man, I don't blame you. So he goes and starts his truck, and he's up there, and he's been in the truck about five minutes. And I'm sitting down here, and I was stoking the fire because I was trying to stay warm because it was pretty chilly this morning. And as he's sitting in the truck, I'm sitting down here by the fire. He's completely on the other side of the cabin in the truck. And I hear something right off straight out here to the east that sounds like it stands up because I can hear the leaves crunch. And then all of a sudden, all I could hear was a real light faint. Like, and it just went down to the creek. 
and I lost the sound. But it walked from right out here, probably, I don't know, 50, 60 yards off the cabin mm. and walked straight down that direction. Yeah, and last night I heard something big back there, too. I think the they were side. triangulating us last night. Because mm. if you remember, every now and then we'd catch something here, but most of the activity was down off this direction and up on that hillside where Big Al was. Mm. They were like, you know, but, well, maybe even four because that out there. But that could have been this guy that was over here. He could have made that snap and then moved into position up here. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Later in the evening when we went up the hill, he probably moved up closer, yeah. you know, to watch where we were going. I don't know. That's when we went up on the hill and was, you know, we left the, uh, the microphone down here and started doing all the calls. But I think that did have an effect on what took place last night. I really do. I think those calls actually brought stuff in and around us. And, you know, it very well could have not been Sasquatch, but there was a lot of movement around us all night last night. Yeah, you we're know, optimistic, aren't we? Oh, yeah, well, I can tell you that something was out here, mm -hmm. you know, and at least there was one big owl. Yeah. That was not a coyote. That was not a cat. That was not a bear. <laughs> that was... That was Sasquatch, without a doubt. And I really wish, and I hope, I hope that uh, that uh, recorder that we had down there near the uh, creek picked that up. And I'm oh, pretty yeah. certain it did. I'm sure we picked up some unusual yeah. vocalizations, sounds, and we might have picked up something that we never even heard. So. Oh, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that's going to happen, you know. And it's winter time. All the leaves are off the trees still. Yes. Well, we're going into springtime, but um, right. even with the thermal camera, you can only see so far into the woods, like 20, oh, 30 thick. yards, yeah, maybe a little thick. bit further. Yeah. So in the summertime, oh, they'd have to be you, right up on yeah, you. Yeah, you would have to literally have him standing next to you to see him with a thermal. Yeah. As thick as it gets out here. I mean, it gets thick, thick, mm -hmm. quick. I mean, by, by April... Mid-April, you and I will not be able to walk through the woods out here. We won't get through them. I mean, there, we simply will not get through up along that creek and that holler that's over here and down along that creek mm -hmm. without running it. We, we, we could get through it, but we'll be extremely uncomfortable because we'll have thorns all over us and everything else because it just, I mean, the undergrowth is immense here. And it's strange because there's so much uh, canopy as well. Usually you don't get that much undergrowth, but for some reason this portion of the woods is really, really thick. And it carries a lot of ticks, a lot of bugs, a lot of animals. I mean, a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's deer through here thick uh, most of the year. But like I discussed with you, I didn't, I didn't get to kill any deer this year. Here in my sad face. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, it, it did not make me happy that I didn't take a deer this year because I, I you know what i think it might have been that uh that wasting disease yeah. i think it hit this county pretty hard because they said that it hit like i can't remember if it was jefferson county it definitely Phelps hit county. my county did it mm -hmm. yeah and i think it hit this county gasconade we'll say it one time mm -hmm. it's gasconade counties where we're at um but I think we had a, a huge die off this year. I really do because I didn't even see deer all, all the whole hunting season. I never seen one deer and usually I'll, I'll catch a glimpse of something moving. I never seen nothing, yeah. you know, unless my neighbors decided they were going to harvest more deer than they should have. It's yeah. the only thing I could think. CWD and EHD, that's a strange disease. They don't seem to have an answer for it. It seems like those three-letter words are um, government-created. I'm not going to say it is. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Anything. They do say that, that, that it's, they, they believe, that from what they have found, that they believe the, um, uh, the deer are getting near the waterways that are drying up and mm -hmm. that whatever they're getting is from the mud and is some kind of parasite that's in the mud. That's what they say. Yeah. And what freaks me out the most is um, how they talk about how it hasn't jumped to humans yet. Right. So it's like they know yeah, why, the right. possibility. Why, why are you using that word, uh -huh. you know? Like they the, know eventually yeah. it's going to build up to right. transmitting to humans. Right. And we're going to be like those deer walking around yeah. like zombies now infecting we, each other. Yeah. And we got to take as we know, there's already theory hat off. Yeah. But yeah, it is strange. It's like, really, mm -hmm. you know, why do you use that word yet? 
you know that's yeah. like using the word like if. they're expecting it to right exactly and, um, what is strange i, I kind of feel like animals are going extinct all over the world if you even look at alaska like they say there's way less caribou right a lot less animals in africa people that are alive today used to say whenever i was young there would be herds and for miles of, and of miles wildebeest and now they and say there's that, yeah. nothing and that's in their lifetime so imagine in yeah. 100 years 200 years there's right. not going to be anything left they're going extinct we may not have this around us mm -hmm. you know what i mean this area within 100 years could very easily be desert you know and none of this forestry even being here you know yeah. i mean anything's possible those deserts aren't created you know by happenstance they you know they have large die off for whatever reason and that's what creates those desert areas yeah. you know cuz they've proven through time that there's you know been uh, 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 what you call it there's been forests in areas and now it's desert oh, yeah. you know what i mean antarctica used Antarct to be right. tropical yep. egypt used to be a lush right prosperous land and yep Missouri very well could fall into oh any it, that realm of possibility is mm -hmm. is definitely there yeah. you know yeah anything's possible in my mind yeah this is uh it's been a great trip so far I don't know if Miguel's gonna stay another night or not will he'll determine that but he's he's worn out I'm probably gonna stay another night even mm -hmm. if he doesn't only because I had such a good time last night um that's not to say I can't be scared off because I've been scared off more than once and I'm right. not afraid to admit it. Um, it's cool when you have somebody with you. It, and it when is. You're it out really is. Yourself, yeah, when you're by yourself, man, it's, it's a, a whole, whole different, different yeah. story, mm -hmm. you know, because there's no one here to go, did I hear that? Did you hear that? You know, kind of thing. And uh, when someone's here, you can bounce things off of each other and you don't feel like you're out of your mind, you know. But like when that happened down here, there was no question what that was. You know, mm -hmm. after that howl and that whoa, and I it just echoed through this whole uh, valley through here. I was like, and I tried. I did everything humanly possible to glue my butt to this seat and stay here. Mm -hmm. And it didn't last but two minutes, and I was running like a girl. I was out of here. I was like, nope, I'm running. Yep. The flight kicked in. I'm not fighting. I'm flighting. Yeah. And for any skeptic out there that doesn't believe in Sasquatch, yeah. I understand why. I yeah, really I do. do too. But it's good to remain open-minded. Right. And just know that anything's possible. Anything is possible. I mean, especially what's been, you know, all the stuff that's been coming out in the past, even the past five years, you know, all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's true. There's UFOs. Oh, yeah, this is true, too. Oh, oh this, the, you know, and it's only a matter of time. They're going to acknowledge this as well. They're yeah. going to say they do exist, mm -hmm. you know. I know it's, ha I know it's going to happen. I mean, it's only a matter of time, mm -hmm. you know. And if anything, if, if anything, it would be to capture the, uh, the, the news cycle, you know what I mean, yeah. to control a, a narrative, you know, mm -hmm. quite possibly. Absolutely. Who knows, you know. And I understand how they don't believe something that large could hide out in the woods but whenever they say there's no dna footprints photos or videos that's when they cross the line yeah but to say you know i don't believe yeah in because that. all fine. yeah all of that is available and all of that has been done and we all know mm -hmm. what has been the result of all those findings yeah you know it is something that we don't know what it is but it also has human dna in it mm -hmm. so we're linked somehow which I kind of always knew in the first place. And I think every Sasquatch researcher that's ever lived realized, and even the people that have, have seen them and physically put them in a scope, you know, you've heard so many people all the time. They're like, I was getting ready to shoot it. And once I looked at its face, I couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah. And the reason why is because they see commonality and they know they're shooting a person. Yeah. You know, that's why they don't pull the trigger because that is human like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and therefore they just, they back off, you know, they yeah. put the gun back on safety and they're like, no, I'm not shooting it, you know, mm -hmm. because it's like shooting your grandpa out in the woods, literally, you know, yeah. who would want to do that? So yeah, it just, it's, it's known it, I think it's going to come out. I'm hoping within the next five years, you know, we get a lot more answers. Um, the, the 
Bigfoot field and their Sasquatch field, however you want to look at it, really needs uh, something to, you know, to happen so that people do realize, other than, you know, the, the Patty film, you know, hopefully you get the footage. That'd be great. You know, I've had that opportunity before. That I kick my butt all the time, man. Really? Not having that camera, yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah, it hits me sometimes, and it's like, dang it. Yeah. Well, kind of well, like um, when you yeah. miss a giant trophy buck, like mm -hmm. that pit you get in your stomach. Stomach, yeah. yeah. That sickness. It's yeah. almost like a, um, like you're getting ready to throw up. Like, mm -hmm. really? Did I just do that? Yeah. And especially it's hard on you when you realize you were the fault of it. It's like yeah. uh, multiple times. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Multiple times. Yeah. When I told you the spotlight story where the whole clan showed up, I had a camera in my hand and the spotlight. Really? But even with the spotlight, the screen was black. And I was thinking, well, at least I'm going to get audio. But all you hear is that fox going off, like w what called them in, like a fox in distress or rat really? in distress. Yeah. The whole screen's black. And I didn't know how to use a camera at that time. I think I had it on auto mode instead of manual. But my thing is, is how is that even possible? They're so clever. How do they, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, if somebody's got something on them, you know, they don't get within 100 yards of anybody. You know, it's almost like they sense the equipment is on. It Somehow or another, they sense something because they will not. I mean, they, they've not been viewed, you know. I thought about that, too, but also with whitetail hunting. The only time I didn't bring my bow or my rifle out in the woods, there he is underneath my stand, giant buck. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, man, he's right there, and I don't even have nothing on me. I have been caught like that like they two or too. three times, yeah. and I'm sitting there walking through the woods, and I was getting ready to do something. And it was hunting season, and I shouldn't have been out doing what I was doing. And then all of a sudden, you look up, and there's this big old nanny doe, and you're like, look how fat she is. And you're like, yeah. standing there with nothing in your hand to shoot her with. You're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yep. We've all made that mistake. Walk out of the truck, and, oh, I'm just going to run do this real quick. Right there they are looking at you, and you're like, oh. <laughs> you, <Yeah. know? laughs> you get that, dead, you know, yeah, that sense of dread. It's like, dang it, there wasn't an opportunity. What advice do you have for people that have had a Bigfoot encounter that don't want to speak openly about it or come on the channel? Like maybe they watch this show, but they're right. like, no, I don't want to. I don't want yeah. people to know where I live. I don't want agencies coming out to my property. Right. I don't want people making fun of me. Well, the key is, 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 is speak up, speak your truth, and don't reveal your whereabouts, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Gasconade County is a big county. Good luck finding this one. You mm -hmm. know, that's my take on it. Um, don't state where what the address is or nothing. Just don't give up your source and where you're at. Yeah, okay. Go look around Gasconade County. Some people don't even want to do a phone call. Just like where people Isn't that amazing? Voice, they're yeah. so paranoid. They're so they're paranoid. Know where yeah. I live. They're, oh, man, everybody's going to judge me. You know, my thing is, is I don't care. I could even change the pitch to their voice. Yes. Make them sound like someone different, but like they, they won't do some it. Some people yeah. are that paranoid. Oh, they're, they're, like, well, what it is, is they're so afraid of ridicule. And my thing is, is just say your piece. You will not believe how much better you feel. And you can attest to this because we've both done it. I mean, I'm here doing it right now. It makes you feel better to talk about it mm -hmm. because you can relate and people that you're talking with can relate to you because they've more than likely had experiences. Yeah. You know, obviously you've had how many actual sightings? Three, four? A handful. Handful? Handfuls. Really? <laughs> yeah. See, and, and I've never had one, but mm -hmm. I've had a ton of other stuff take place, you know. I don't have to see them to know that they're real. Yeah. I mean, you know. The problem is whenever I bottled up my encounters and I mm -hmm. told myself I'm not telling anybody, I would find myself telling people that didn't even care, that didn't even bring up the subject. Right. I'd be talking to random people in town and be like, well, what do you think about Bigfoot? I, I saw something. And yeah. they'd be like, man, you're crazy. You're crazy. Once you tell yeah. your story. Yeah. And get it out there and socialize with other people that have had encounters. Yep. You stop doing that. You yep. stop going around the gas station right. or in town or your yep. cousin, your brother, and being like, yeah. You sure do. And the, and the simple fact is, 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 and that's what's important about the, the, the Bigfoot and the Sasquatch community, is you do have so many supportive people. I guarantee you, if you want to tell your story, there is somebody out there that wants to listen. Yeah. I promise you that somebody wants to hear what you got to say. Yeah. You know, and they're not going to ridicule you. They're not going to laugh in your face. They're not going to say you're crazy and all these other things. They're going to be like, yeah, guess what? 
this one time I was doing this, and it becomes a kinship, and then you have common interest. Therefore, you know you've always got somebody to go to. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Once you vent to somebody who's a believer, believer a knower, right. and you yep. get in contact with them, yep. and you're able to communicate with them, you quit talking to non-believers and random people about like the subject. Like that. Yeah. It almost happens immediately. Yeah. And you yep. feel better. You know oh, yeah. what you saw, you know right. what you experienced, and you know there's other people out there that yep. have had the same Exactly. Yeah, and, and I still catch myself, you know, talking to my spouse, obviously. I think that's just... Uh, uh, yeah, that's your yeah, that's, that's your, your mate. I mean, yeah. that's your partner. You're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, but she herself, you know, my kids, both of my paternal kids, because I've got you know a total of five children total, but my actual children, my two boys, they both think I'm crazy. They're like, no way, Dad, that doesn't exist. You know that that can be edited, Dad. They can Photoshop that. They can do this. They can do that. And it's like, well, let's go camping, boys. They're like, no. I'm like, well, what's wrong? If they're not real, why are you so scared? Mm -hmm. Go camping with your dad. You know, I, I will prove to you that they're there's afraid. something. They are afraid. They're afraid they it might be don't real. want to know the truth. And yeah. I can I can respect that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But don't judge me. Don't sit there and make fun of me, you know, and say, hey, dad, da, 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 this, that, and the other. I don't believe it, you know, and then and then don't go out with me, you know, in the field and, and experience the things I've experienced, you know. Well, Sean, I believe you. Well, I, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. You know, I believe you, I believe mm -hmm. many people. And that's, what's great about this field of study and people that are into it. They truly enjoy doing what they're doing. Yeah. And I do, or I wouldn't be doing it, yeah. you know, and I don't care what anybody thinks about it. And yeah. I'm just like, whatever, you know, you, you can take it with a grain of salt. You can turn the channel off, you know, yeah. you can do anything you want. Um, and I'm, I'm good with that. I really I, appreciate you too. Like whenever I met yeah. you, heard your story, your experiences and when you mm -hmm. showed your evidence like you know how good that made me feel knowing that there's other people out there especially in missouri i'm oh yeah i'm truly blessed to have met this person that's, well, that's right, god that, lining me up with other people or whatever you want to call it the universe the universe mm -hmm. right unfolding as it should well and that's what freaked me out when we first talked you know and i told the story you know your explanation and you blew me away. I mean, I was just so taken back when you asked me that the last time. You were like, Sean, so what's it feel like to be the only guy in Missouri that caught audio and da-da-da? Dude, that hit me like a, I mean, like a ton of bricks. I was like, oh, like, really? Like, you know, certainly somebody else has caught something in Missouri, but maybe not. I don't know. You know, I mean, if there's other evidence out there, please bring it forward, you yeah. know. Um and I'm sure Miguel will link the occasion in uh, at the other property. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. People call it the Ohio man calls, um, Bigfoot yeah. howls, whatever you want right. to call it. But, but in this case, it's it's the Missouri howl. You know, yeah, it's uh, and I recorded it. You know, it was it was a, a unique experience. It was profound, life changing. Uh, it was something that just really solidified a lot for me i was like oh that's that's unique that's something different you know and i knew immediately that it was something that i had never heard you know and it was something that just clicked in me i was like where's my phone where's my phone where's my phone because i knew i knew it wasn't a cat i knew it wasn't a bear i knew it, i mean the only thing i can equate it to is something as large as an elephant mm -hmm. And they don't exist in North America, yeah. you know. So um, it was very, very loud. Uh, I wish I could have got the recording on earlier. That's my only drawback is I wish I actually had the phone on me and not in the truck charging. Yeah. You know, but, you know, a lot of people, like you said before, they don't even think to turn the phone on. Yeah. They're, they, they just listen and they have the experience like, oh, wow, what was that? you hear that you know kind of thing and it never occurs to them click your phone on turn it on you know and in my case it was instantaneous i was running i was like where's the phone where's the phone you know until i found it yeah. but uh yeah it was uh it was one of those experiences that you know i'll live with the rest of my life and it it, it, it i i mean you never forget the date uh it just, it's one of those things that's just like so uh, raw. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. you know? And that's when I became a knower was that day, yeah. March 5th, 
Yeah. You know, I was like, there's no doubt. That's the day that your life changed right oh, there. <laughs> right. Yep. It was, it was uh, one of those things that, you know, because I, be honest with you, I had never in a million years imagined that anything was even going to be out there. I was out there because, like I've told you before, I have um, spiritual experiences when I go to the woods. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm here for. That was beyond, you know, what took yeah. place that day just completely blew me out of left field. And it just took, you know, everything out of the sails. It was like, wow, that just happened. It takes a long time to process that type oh, of it, experience. It, good God, I bet you it took me a month and a half I, or longer. You I put your brain in repeat mode. You keep thinking about it. Well, I, I woke up. I woke up to hearing it. Uh-huh. You know, on many occasions and didn't realize I was waking up to it for three weeks. I kept waking up at about four in the morning, mm-hmm. almost with succession day in and day out of hearing that in my head, you know, and then I realized that it was like almost captivating my life. And I was like, I got to take a break. Mm-hmm. I got to step back. I got to rethink the process, you know, and that's when, like I told you about that guy the other day that had all those experiences, you know, that was giving me anxiety on your channel, mm-hmm. the, that guy in up, uh, upstate, the upper Michigan. peninsula of Michigan. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There was so much to unpack in that story. And it was such a great story. And he had so much going on and I had that exhilaration like he has on a, almost like a continuous basis can you imagine your oh experiences all the time all throughout the your time. life not all the time but throughout your life or so when you systematic. go to different areas yeah, yeah. no matter where he went I've you know i don't even know if i could I, I would have to go visit somebody i'm serious i'd have to go get therapy That's if it was I, that constant yeah. you know where i came home mm-hmm. and they were there messing with me you know i'm fortunate in the fact that i haven't had anything happen at home or anything like that. It only takes place when I come here. Yeah, that's you know what, what I, mean? I. That's why I say they're spiritual, not because I go out there and sit Indian style and meditate right, yeah. or, you know, mind speak to them, do things like that. But yeah, I mean, you can have those guys that have those experiences, and they never return to the woods. Mm-hmm. Never. They want no part of it. And me, I mean, I guess I could have freaked out, but I think that I got to you in enough time within that year time frame. Cause like I said, I reached out to the other guy, um, Shane and, uh, with, uh, into the 400 Shane Carpenter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's busy, busy. And he never got back with me. I was like, man, I want to get this out there. I want someone to hear this. And that's when I reached out to you and I'm like, look, this is, this is what I want. I want you to pull this vocalization out because it's on a cell phone. I can hear it real good. You know, when I would put earbuds in and everything, it was like, wow. Okay. That's kind of recreating the scene again. Mm -hmm. But what you were able to do with it was pretty impressive. But I, I would love for, like like I said before, for like Thinker Thunker or one of those guys to do an, uh, an analysis on. What about that Nelson guy? We talked about how he oh, was in Kansas cool City. Yeah. If he could that analyze cool. that and bring it out bring and tell us his take on it. Is yep. that a person or is that some type of audio device yeah, I've, or is I've, that an yeah, unknown creature? I've had all kinds of person, I, people, and I've let them listen to it. And then they're like, you know, are you sure that's not a train horn? I'm like, uh, I worked in the train industry for 18 years. Right. Um, train horns can't make that noise. What I felt that day was in my chest, and it was so raw, you know, there's no way that was anything other than what I know it to be, you know. Mm-hmm. There was a Sasquatch, without a doubt, 100%. There's no, I don't even question any aspect of that day. Absolutely none. Initially I did, but now, looking back, reflecting on it, and no, there's nothing that day that one I know did take place or didn't take place. It is so vivid in my mind that I know exactly what happened that whole entire day, even to the phone call to my buddy and him, you know, being like, are you serious and blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's so much to the whole story and um, the wife 
was really blown away. Mm -hmm. When she heard that, she's like, oh, wow. You know, I think it probably changed for, for her that day because it's on my phone. I captured it, and I've let many people listen to it, and they were like, this is unbelievable, man. It's unfreaking believable how loud that is. And, you know, and I got to thank you because I don't know how we would have, how I would have ever got that audio to the level that you brought it to. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, because cell phones, let's face it, they don't have the best audio. No. They've got pretty good video quality and they're getting better all the time. Yeah. But the audio quality is not great. I wish that's something that they would work mm -hmm. on. Like maybe even, you know, uh, Samsung. Whoever you are, work with Bose or somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and increase the uh, the capability of you know the audio portion of cell phones. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that would be game changing personally. Oh, you yeah. know, absolutely. Because I mean, think if that cell phone could pick up even a tenth of like a parabolic microphone. Yeah, that would change everything. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. The, the level and the quality that we would get from just that much of an increase. And you know it's 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 capable with the technology we have. Yeah. You know? The best way to go about it is to get professional audio or professional mm -hmm. camera. Professional camera, yeah. yeah. Don't even worry about a cell phone. Right. <laughs> but you know as well as I do. That's something you always have on you. And it, and it, it it's, it's hard to catch it any other time because if you're in the element mm -hmm. and you have that stuff on, they know it somehow. They know it, you know. That's it's what makes really, them intelligent. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we sit here like, doo, 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 you know. If they couldn't do that, we'd already have all the answers. Oh, we would have the answers without a doubt. Mm -hmm. 